Good evening, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome back to to uh, Schuylkill River Valley and to Sidetrack Sunday. 
This is uh, Sidetrack Sunday number one for December 2021. Can't believe the year's almost over. All right. Uh, as usual, the very outdated schedule of live streams and shows, etc., is over my right shoulder. <clears throat> I, uh, I will get that updated very soon. Uh, I've been working on it. All right, let's see who's here uh, while uh, while you guys are looking at that. We've got John Knopfels here. Good to see you, John. Greg from Midsummer Railway N-Scale. Good to see you, Greg. Uh, Dustin N-Scale's here. And we've got Mickey Collins, the Pirates of the Model Trains. Good to see you, Mickey. Uh, New Fenris Railroad is here. Good to see you, uh, Bill. And Connie, Dragon Lover 68's in the house. Let's see, who else do we have? Mr. Pick the Bid is here. Good to see you, sir. And Dwight Curley's here. Let's see, here's Marty from the m and Short Lines. And our good friend Jerry Satz. Jerry Satterelli's here. Good to see you, Jerry. Thanks for stopping in. Rick and the r &L Railroad's in the house. Good to see you, Rick. And Ron Moen is here. Ron, thanks for stopping in. And same to you, Joe. Joe Rader from the Black Rock Central. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Steve Childers is here. Childers is here. Good to see you, Steve. And so is Mr. Jimbo. It's been a while, Mr. Jimbo. Good to see you. Uh, Drew Dudes Model Trains is here. Let's see. Who else do we have? And Gus Hadley, the lunatic from Arno. Thanks for stopping in, Gus. I appreciate it. Tom's Trains and Things is here. Good to see you, Tom. Yes, you finally made it on time. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Who else do I have? I think I said hi to Dwight Curley. Uh, John 2618 is here. Good to see you, John. And Dan's Model Railroading Journeys here. And here is Ethan Armitage. Hello, Ethan. Good to see you. And Melvin Fackler's here. Good to see you, Melvin. Norman Rose in the house. And great to see you. And so is Lynn McCurdy. And the HD MMRC is here from the desert. Uh, let's see. Roy Eltham's here. Good to see you, Roy. And so is Thomas Split Rock 323. Thanks for stopping in, Thomas. Santa Fe Bob's here. Good to see you, Bob. Let's see. Caboose 121. Cameron is here. Uh, let's see. Uh, so is Ian from the Lehigh River Subdivision. Manchet is here. Good to see you, Manchet. Appreciate you stopping in. Here's Dwayne's Fork and Spoon Railroad. Great to see you, Dwayne. And Roy, Container Man 68. Good to see you, Roy. Thanks for stopping in. Touch of the Brush Model Weathering is here. Great to see you. Glad you could make it. Al Mar, how are you, sir? Good to see you. And Mike the Rail Hardest is in the house. Good to see you, Mike. Uh, there's Bob from the P, P, K, and W Model Works. It's great to see you, Bob. Fultz Bailey Model Railroad is here. Good to see you, Rick. And I think I'm caught up. If I miss out, Mark, here's Mark E. Saunders. Good to see you, Mark. And I think I caught everybody, caught up here to everybody. I hope so. If I missed you, I do apologize. And anybody who's just uh, just watching and not chatting, it's great to have you here. I appreciate it. All right, uh, let's see. I got a few things here, Bob. See what we uh, see what we can come up with. Uh, let's see. The uh, the schedule's just about over. Uh, let's see. Uh, before uh, I have. Uh, Let's see. I'm in mean, short lines. I think I said hi to you, Marty. If not, hello. If if I did, hello again. Possum Bayou. Good to see you, Rusty. Glad you can make it. Uh, let's see here. 
Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, I do have uh, I do have an update on the N scale layout. I've been uh, I've been making some progress on that. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the 2021 STS uh, train car that we'll be giving away. Uh, it's a uh, wood chip hopper, and of course decorated with the STS logo and and all all of our logos. And but we haven't decided, <clears throat> but we haven't decided yet uh, exactly how we're going to give it away. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Uh, I missed it, Rick. But you were on for quite a while, so you couldn't have been uh, couldn't have been too uh, unsuccessful or unproductive, I guess I should say. Uh, anyhow, uh, we haven't come up with how we're going to be giving uh, giving us these cars away. We have again uh, an HO scale and an N scale car. Uh, if you remember last year, uh, we had a a question. Uh, Chris from Go, Go Beer Go Home is here. Good to see you, Chris. Uh, we had a question, and that was when each of us had our first Sidetrack Sunday show, Ray had done an intro for us and explained how uh, Sidetrack Sunday came to be. And he... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think there's probably a few that would uh, would like to see that uh, see that Joe. Uh, anyhow, when uh, when Ray was uh, introducing us, he changed the story slightly for each of us. So we uh, we as part of the uh, the entry, the qualifying question, I guess, would be would have been, you know, which story was correct. Uh, but we haven't come up with anything yet, so. Uh, we we have uh, we have talked about it, but uh, it, it can be a little tough to get any serious conversation going in the uh, the sidetrack Sunday uh, chats, as as I'm sure you folks can imagine. So uh, actually, Jason suggested that I put it to you guys. If anybody has any ideas on uh, on what we can do to give this car away, uh, we don't want to do it just. You know, random numbers. You know, like Sparky does, and there's nothing wrong with uh, with Sparky's Sparky's method, of course. But because it's uh, these are one of a kind cars, um, well, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So, if anybody has any uh, any thoughts, uh, please uh, shout them out there. We'll see uh, see what we come up with because so far we haven't. Uh, <laughs> Well, Tom, it's certainly not trying to have a conversation with the STS guys. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sh quite sure uh, your dad riddles are quite going to work, Ray. Home run, <laughs> a home run derby, huh? You know, I mean, that might leave uh, a few of us older ones out here. I mean, uh, I know I have you by quite a few years. You can probably hit a. Home run a little bit further than I can. Now, maybe not back in the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, if if anybody has anything, any ideas, any suggestions, uh, we would certainly appreciate it. Uh, put them up there in chat, and we'll see if uh, see what we come up with. Do a liking comment on your channel below, and pick a name from a hat live. Yeah, we could do that. Touch of a brush. That's that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Chris. That, that that'll do it. Anthony Dodge, the model train outsider. Good to see you, Anthony. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, and oops. looks like uh, looks like Cameron does know the answer to uh, to Ray's dad riddle. Hey, Artie. Good to see you. Let's see how far Heath trains can fly off the shelves. <laughs> he does have a, a little bit of experience with that, uh, Roy. Although I don't think he, he really wants to repeat it. All right, so uh, Shay's, N, uh, Shay's N scale. Yeah, it's good to see you, Shay. 
Norman Rowe, I think I said hello to you. I hope so. If not, hello. I'm uh, just looking over the list here, see if I missed anybody. I don't think so. I hope not. Oh, there's Heath. Humanity Junction. Come up with a secret word, and the first person that says the word wins. <laughs> that could be a long, uh, a long live stream giving that one away, uh, Heath. Yeah, that that right, uh, Norman is certainly uh, certainly a possibility. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what uh, see what these guys uh, can finally agree to. So I have been uh, working on the N-scale layout. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. What is the speed of gravity in Heath's rooms? <laughs> or Tom's choice here. The locomotives or rolling stock hit the store first. <laughs> uh, let's see. So far, everybody's kind of leaning on Heath here a little bit. Let's see. We should have a guess on how many times tree comes up in a conversation in one hour. Well, on, on your streams, Rick, that would probably be quite a few. Uh, Anthony Dodge wants a rousing round of duck, duck, goose. <laughs> the word is crumptations. Lynn, Lynn suggests we find a vacant parking lot write everybody's name on the pavement, drop the rail car from a helicopter and see which name it lands on. What could go wrong? Absolutely nothing, uh, Lynn, absolutely nothing. Uh, a contest. Give a big sack of canned goods to a local food shelf and enter your name. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're stumped too, Tom. So it's not, uh, it's not just you. But I'm sure we will come up with something. We're, uh, but we are kind of running out of time. I mean, this is December, so uh, take a guess as to which one of us gets dressed up this year. There's a thought. Uh, <laughs> if a locomotive falls off the layout and nobody's around to see it, does it still get a blame heath? Of course. I see. Okay, well, Artie can uh, donate the use of the helicopter here. Although, uh, your helicopter might be pretty far away, Artie. Hey, there's Stephen from uh, Wigwag Workshop. Good to see you, Stephen. Heath wants wet, wet T-shirt contest. Well, uh, Rick, you said you weren't productive, but at least Tom enjoyed it. That is that's your uh, is your live stream, by the way. All right, a uh, white a white T-shirt where contest where Heath is the only contestant <laughs> dressed up. I'm a naturist. Who dresses up? That's uh, Mike, the rail artist, by the way. All right, all right. So, like I said, I have been working on the N scale layout. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Pick the Vid, me too. I, I almost didn't uh, post that, put that uh, comment up there. But I figured you guys already saw it anyhow. So, uh, Anyhow, I have been working on the, uh, the N-Scale layout. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for this one. I, was, I wanted to see who was going to come up with that, Tom. I'm kind of surprised at you. <laughs> So let's see here. Um, I'm going to start, let's see, with this bunch <laughs> or the wives. I really hope it's the, the, the wives, Roy. Hey, there's Randall Ellison. Good to see you, Randall. Thanks for stopping in. Let's 
this. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to start here with uh, where did it go? Let me find it. I do have my new computer set up, but I don't have everything put back the way it was. So bear with me a little bit here. Uh, here we go. The STS goes to Hooters for dinner. Live stream chat tries to guess the price of the bill. Food only. Rita is not included. <laughs> so here I'm going to start with uh, with the legs. Uh, not usually the most uh, exciting part of the layout. But I'm really happy with these legs. They're simple L-girder legs, and I've certainly built uh, my share of L-girders. But uh, our good friend Jerry Satterelli made these for me, and what a difference uh, having a professional professional do it do it makes. <laughs> yeah, that made a lot of sense. <laughs> what a difference the professional makes. Uh, the, these legs are, are really nice. I mean, they're nicely finished and sanded. He was uh, concerned because uh, my grandkids would be here, you know, looking at the layout, of course, except uh, the youngest one is 19, so I hope by now he's not... Uh, <laughs> I hope he, that's not a problem for him. Uh, don't point my computer back the way it was. Wasn't that the reason it quit? Good point, Lynn. <laughs> and showing off my legs. Well, actually, they're kind of Jerry's legs. Uh, and Bill is a Renaissance Festival member and construction worker. He doesn't dress up more down to skivvies. <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. They are they are really nice legs. Uh, Jerry did Jerry did an awesome job. Here's a here's another view of them. Uh, like I said, he had them all sanded and, and smooth. They will get painted, uh, but that'll be uh, once I stop spilling things on them. Uh, the stretchers I added, but Jerry did mark uh, mark where he thought the stretcher should go. And, of course, I listened. You know, the man is a pro. <laughs> and, they are, <laughs> and they are even shaved legs. Yes, Jerry, Jerry was nice enough to shave them first. Uh, Somerset Andy, it's good to see you. Yeah, it is kind of late for you. Appreciate you stopping in. Uh, when Jerry was building the, the legs... Oops, wrong picture, wrong picture. Where did it go? Huh. Oops. All right, you can probably see it in, on the, the leg on the, uh, the far back left corner. Jerry put in uh, shelves there on each of those legs. That's for the, uh, for the layout to just sit. Sits nicely on those shelves, and I did screw up through the shelf to the layout to keep it all all nice and square. And he also put um, bases on them. I've added um, some casters to them so they so that it rolls nice and easily. Uh, most of the time it'll when it's running it'll be um, up against the wall. But uh, <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Yes, they are. Uh, and in Canada, they don't have $1 bills. Is that true? You don't have $1 bills anymore? And we still have them. We still have pennies. Um, yeah, like I said, I put casters on them. It rolls out real nice and uh, and smooth. And I'm, I'm really very, uh, <laughs> very happy with it. <laughs> That's just the main bus, Artie. Give me a chance. It'll be a, a whole lot messier by the time I'm finished, I assure you. So from there, let's move up to the to the top of the layout. 
And what you're looking, you're looking at uh, the cameras on the south side of the layout, which is the front of the layout when it's back up against the wall, and you're looking towards the towards the west. The uh, the hillside in the front that that's all white right now. Um, that will be uh, mostly a residential area of houses, uh, resort type homes. Uh, I'm not sure what else I'm going to. Uh, to fit in there. Wow, Artie, you haven't had uh, dollar bills for decades? Wow. And we still have them. And they don't buy very much anymore, but we still do have them. So th that hillside will be mostly uh, a residential area. There'll be uh, some houses. I'm not sure what, what all is going to fit in there. And you can see uh, where I've been sketching out the, the red lines, uh, rough idea of some roads. Uh, whether it's actually going to work out that way or not, we'll see when I get to that point. Uh, thanks, Heath. Uh, the the 90-degree crossing is together, but it's not quite hooked up yet. I'll get to that soon. Uh most of the track has been put down. It's been glued down. Um, mo <laughs> That's it, Roy. Million dollar homes on the on the hilltop. This is uh, the east side of the layout. It's going to be a snowmobile resort. So these are going to be the uh, the rich people that come up here to snowmobile. Uh, so most of the track has been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got to keep you guys on your toes, Shay. If they were all sidetracked, then, then, then there would be no surprises left. Anyhow, most of the uh, the track has been glued down. You can see there's still uh, push pins in, uh, in a good bit of it actually, probably about a third of it, and that's all the track that is leading up to the four bridges. I didn't uh, want to tack that. I didn't want to glue that down yet until I get the bridges in place. <laughs> Snowbird, yeah. Yeah, but kind of the reverse of snowbirds. Uh, there, I, I'm getting that impression, Rusty. I don't really know what happened last night. I wasn't around, but it does, uh, does kind of sound like that. Uh, but I wanted to, to leave the, the track leading up to the bridges. Um, I'm bored and lost bus lines? Not quite sure what you mean, John. If you're talking about the, the main bus line that was underneath the track, that's just my bus wires. Uh, but uh, So I wanted to leave the track leading up to the bridges loose so that I could have a little bit of... Uh, Little, little bit of play when I put the bridge in place. The, uh, the top of that hillside at the very back of the picture, it's, uh, it will get attached permanently once I get the track underneath it finished and, uh, <clears throat> and get the inside of the tunnel uh, scenic out. Uh, that that will be uh, will be a fully scenic tunnel. Let's see here. Here you can see from the backside of it, um, it will be open so that you will be able to. Uh... <laughs> well, it, well, Drew, dude, if it was on uh, Rick's channel, that comes as no surprise to me. <laughs> and yeah, Rusty, I'm, I'm definitely getting getting that impression. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the uh, the back side of that tunnel will be uh, you you will be able to, to see through it. And besides, it gives me some access. Um, let's see what's going on here. Give me access to it. The the trains, of course, are never going to uh, to derail. <laughs> uh, but I will might have to get in there and uh, and clean clean it out. Uh, yeah, I, I do too. Uh, and I, I, something I definitely wanted to um, to include here. Uh, 
the Playboy Mansion is probably going to go right there at the top of that hill, overlooking the uh, the rich people in their uh, resort homes below it. So now we'll go over to the east side of the layout. Uh, this this is where the snowmobile resort's going to be. Uh, and the top of this will also be removable for now. Uh, again, it'll be a scenic interior, and I'll have plenty of access from the back so that I can get in there and... Uh, and clean my uh, clean my track. <laughs> the show doesn't even get on the rails. Is it really sidetracked? Uh, if it's here, it is. Um, so let's see. That uh, that's all I have of that. Uh, that hill isn't finished. Obviously, uh, it's going to get a get a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of snow, and uh, I'm going to have to to build it out some, but. Uh, that's the basic shape. That's where, like I said, the, uh, the snowmobiles are going to, going to run. Now, I, uh, yeah, you need a Yeti. Well, I, I am planning, um, uh, a grizzly bear, uh, rich people looking down on us peons. Well, I don't know that we would actually be considered peons since these are all going to be millionaires homes. Uh, if I'm a millionaire and you want to call me a peon, by all means, that's fine. <laughs> Playboy Mansion has extremely well-detailed tunnel with water, too. <laughs> uh, not, not all that much, uh, not all that much, Mike. Just rambling on about the layout. So I did, uh, I did save the best for last, uh, where I made the most progress and, uh, and actually what I'm happiest with. So I wanted to get the river finished before I, get, before I put the bridges down. It'd just be a whole lot easier. And, um, and I can't finish, couldn't finish the track until I get the bridges down. So everything was, was kind of hinged on getting the river finished. Snowmo snowmobiles from Shapeways, uh, very possibly, Bob. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked into it real that closely yet. Uh, I, uh, I do have a three D printer, so I might just end up uh, designing them and printing them myself. Um, <laughs> actually, Shay, they're calling for snow here on. Uh, on Wednesday, I believe, we're supposed to get uh, two to three inches. So, yeah, I could just leave it out there and and I'd be done. Uh, so, anyhow, the, the river was kind of key to getting all of this, uh, all of this finished. So, uh, so here's what, uh, here's what we got. This is the north end of the layout, which is the backside side. The railroad workers are peons because of your because of your rich wide driver train. Good point, Roy. Uh, this is uh, the north side, looking south. This is the the way the river river flows. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with uh, with the river at this edge yet. It might get uh, might get a, a small waterfall. Might get a little dam. I'm not sure yet. Um, but, uh, this is, uh, you can see off to the left there. I have, uh, thank you, Drew, dude. I have some, uh, some ice where the, the water had flash, uh, splashed up onto the, uh, onto the ground, onto the, the, the bank there and froze. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's, and next... Now this is just the uh, just a, a higher angle of the uh, of the same same shot. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Joe good point. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. 
Ozark, Midland, and Southern Railway. Great to see you. Thanks for stopping in. It's good to have you here, man. Uh, so this is uh, this is just a higher angle of the the same the same shot. You can see a little bit of the. Uh, uh, thank you, Norman. I appreciate it. A little bit of the the water's edge there on on both sides. Uh, this is just a little bit further down uh, down the river. Uh, again, you can see a little bit of the ice there up alongside the the cliff face that's melting back into the river, and also uh, down here in front, there's a uh, there's a bit of the ice. Uh, Mr. Jimbo, uh, this is this is not the toilet paper. Uh, Jeff Jeff Bennington and Elkhorn Valley Railroad, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, Mr. Jimbo, this is not the toilet paper one. That was the diorama, which I have not gotten back to because I wanted to, to concentrate on this. This river was poured from uh, two-part resin, and uh, the ripples on top were added with uh, a thick acrylic gel. Uh, so this one is, uh, yes, is the different... A little bit different than it was. Uh, ice skaters, dogs peeing in the snow. <laughs> Let's see. Ice skaters, dogs peeing in the snow, drunk guys writing their names in the snow with their pee, and kids with their tongues stuck to flagpoles. That might be a little bit tough in, in end scale, Roy. Uh, oh, no no problem, Mr. Mr. Jimbo. I, I was working on several projects at a time. It can be confusing even for me, so no big deal. Uh, here's just a slightly further back shot from uh, of the same angle. Now this is the other side of the bridge, but it's now looking north. Uh, this gives uh, so far the best view of how deep that that water looks. Um, I'm really impressed with the way this this came out. Uh, not that I'm patting myself on the back, but I guess I am. Uh, but that that water's for uh, thank you thank you Ray I appreciate that yes uh, check out uh, check out Jeff's Jeff's uh, channel he's got a uh, really nice looking uh, really nice looking layout going uh, so but this this really shows shows the depth that you see in, in the river I'm kind of uh I was kind of surprised at that. Uh, thank you, Norman. Uh, I'm, I was kind of surprised at the depth I got uh, just because I added no uh, tint to the water. That's just the, the clear uh, clear resin. So that what you're seeing there is what I painted in on the base of the river. And for being about a quarter of an inch uh, thick, it, it really does look a lot thicker than that a lot deeper than that I should say and here's just a little bit further down um, you can see a couple uh, tree trunks that are, um, are have fallen into the river uh, there's actually just out of that camera shot there will be uh, the rest of the tree that has um, oops I didn't mean to do that uh, where am I? Uh, uh, the, the rest of the tree will be will be there that was struck by lightning. I already have uh, have the trunk ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and I have even burned it, so it does look like it was hit with uh, hit with lightning. Uh, but I didn't put that in yet because. I'm still reaching over too much. I didn't want to, didn't want to be tearing it out yet, and at least until I get some snow down. <laughs> and uh, Roy, I think you're right. So, and now we get out a little bit further down. Here's a, another uh, another rock face, and you can see um, the Whitewater Rapids here. Uh, 
probably a little narrow to go uh, whitewater rafting, but I'm pretty pretty pleased with the way they came out. And you can also see a few of the the branches from the trees that broke off and washed down the uh, the the river. <laughs> Hey, hey, uh, Rick, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, that's life. At least uh, I didn't have somebody coming out and chopping it down. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. appreciate that. <laughs> um, and, and you get to see part of uh, one of the bridges that I just have placed there. Um, I am working on... Uh, on the bridge track to go on it. That's why, uh, that's why that track, that flex track is just cut off there. And here's the, uh, the south end of the, the river where it, uh, spreads out a little bit. And, uh, here you go. You get a, a better view of those two bridges. Those two bridges are finished. They're painted and, and weathered up, uh, Absolutely, uh, absolutely out well. That's uh, that was, I, I, that's not intentional. I, I, I moved that track to get the bridge in there and cause that uh, that jog. But most of that's going to be cut out anyhow when I get the uh, get the bridge track in place. So uh, it would have been a problem, but it's not not going to last long enough to become one. Uh, Am I going to have a doghouse and a shed by the water? Uh, you know what? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Looks like a good place for a train wreck. Yeah, I think you're right, Lynn. Uh, yes, I haven't uh, trimmed off the, the the little meniscus that forms when you pour the uh, pour the resin yet. So that that will uh, that will. Uh, be cut down in time. Uh, but these two bridges are, they're both finished. They're both painted and weathered and rusted up pretty bad. Uh, I left, uh, I left these two, uh, these two are, are low, lower to the river and right there at the rapids. Excuse me. Uh, so I left the, those two bridges more heavily rusted than the, uh, the two through truss bridges will be. And, but they, they haven't been painted or anything yet. And I believe that was, yeah, that was the end of that. So let's see this. Uh, the, the ice that, that I made, this, is, this was, uh, was going to just be a test, but it came out looking so good. I was, uh, I was real happy with it. This is the, uh, uh, the resin that I used to pour the river. This was a little bit left at the uh, the bottom of the container. And I uh, I just poured it out on, onto a piece of glass and sprinkled in some um, baking soda. Started around and it came up with uh, what I think is a really good, uh, really good uh, example of, of some, some ice. Uh, it came off the glass real easily, and I was able to to, to break it into into smaller chunks and place it alongside the river in a few places. Uh, thanks, Norman. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I liked about it. They rounded over the the edges nicely, so it does look like it's like it's been out there in the sun for a while and starting to melt. Uh, so let's see. This, for anybody who might be interested, this is the resin that I used. It's by a company called Jade Dixon. Um, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. Uh, it's made by a company called Jade Dixon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Now, Jerry, uh, different kind of ice. 
David Z, Z to G, how are you? I don't think I saw you earlier. Uh, th this was uh, this was real cheap resin. I found it on Amazon. I think it was like twelve or thirteen dollars for the uh, for the pint. It was eight ounces uh, of each of the uh, the two parts, and it worked really well. It was uh, it was really easy to work with. I the I had very few. Uh, air bubbles, and when I ran my heat gun across them, they all came right to the surface and popped. So I was I was real happy with it. It dries uh, completely clear. Um, so I'm uh, I'm real <laughs> uh, I I'm, I might work a little bit uh, come a little bit higher than uh, the other John does, uh, Ian. <laughs> uh, but I, I was, uh, was real, ple real, real pleased with this. Like I said, it was like 12 or 13 bucks, which is a whole lot cheaper than uh, than I found uh, anybody else's resin. So uh, I can be uh, I can be cheap when I want to be. So I decided to uh, to give it a shot, and I'm real happy with it. Heath, thanks for stopping in. You have a good night, man. Uh, the, the mix ratio is one to one, uh, which I personally love. Uh, it just makes it whole, a whole lot easier. Uh, and uh, and like I said, it, it was real. It was a pleasure to work with. It really was. And this is the acrylic resin that I used. Uh, not acrylic resin. I'm sorry. Uh, acrylic gel that I used uh, to to add the ripples to the top. Um, I, I experimented with uh, with Mod Podge and an air gun like uh, Luke Talon does, and it's probably me, but I wasn't getting the results that Luke gets. So I ended up trying this. This is a super heavy gel. It's it's a whole lot thicker than Mod Podge is. Um, it does find its level to a point. <laughs> Yep, that's that's very true, Rick. Pizza pizza helps. Uh, this stuff does find its uh, its level to a point, but nowhere near like uh, like Mod Podge does. It, it will still retain most of its shape, just sort of rounds over a little bit. Which uh, gloss medium, yes, yes, Roy uh, Ray gloss medium. That's what I was trying to come up with. It's acrylic super heavy gel medium. Uh, it, it dries to the touch, uh, pretty quickly. It drives to the touch in about an hour, maybe, maybe, maybe less than that, as thin as I was putting it on. Um, but it would, it wasn't completely dry. It wasn't completely set up for probably about two hours. Uh, uh, tiny, tiny town trains TV. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, but it was it was really easy to work with. I uh, I put it on with uh, with a round tip uh, brush, and <laughs> oh, absolutely, Al, it's got to be fresh. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. <laughs> uh, yep, it, it is pretty fast. I, I I was real happy with it. I mean, it was like I said, it was set up within a couple hours. And it was dry to the touch in probably less than an hour. Now, if it was, um, if I was putting it on a lot thicker, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it took longer. But I wasn't using uh, using all that much. Small, medium, at large. Only, only you, Ray. Only you. Um, So that's uh that's about where I am with the uh, with the N scale layout. Uh, I should have the uh, the bridge track will be finished uh, early this week, so I can install the bridge track on at least the uh, the two front bridges, the two that are finished painting. I'm still have to get. Um, Thanks, T four. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. 
Well, thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. And uh, the the B roll definitely helps. It, it's e easier to show than to just uh, talk about. Uh, and yeah, check out uh, check out Tiny Town Trains TV channel. Uh, I don't I don't think I've seen you here before, T four. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Norman, no, I had no leaks at all. I had um, I had used um, what are they? Um, thin uh, acetate transparency sheets. Uh, I had a box of these that you can uh, laser print. So I I just cut a piece of that off and um, and uh, I used silicone to attach it to the front to the to the front and back of the layout just to include a nice seal and then uh, screwed a piece of masonite behind that so it was nice and tight and I had no uh, no leaks at all and it uh, it came the the acetate peeled right off and laid me left me with a uh, a really nice finish I was happy with it uh, and Ian, this is uh, not not the first time I poured a river uh, the first one I did was on my first layout, and I did that using Envirotex, the original Envirotex. Um, that, that, that stuff is great, but there is a pretty nasty smell involved with it, and I didn't really want that all in my house. Um, it gets warm, but, but not hot by any means. Uh, there's... Um, Sculpt the mold on top of the foam, but even if I had poured this uh, right right up against the foam, it wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have melted it or deformed it in any way. It's uh, like I said, it just gets warm, but not uh, not hot at all. Uh, well, well, T four, we certainly appreciate you being here. Uh, be sure to check out uh, Heath, Jason, Ray, and uh, that other guy, whatever his name is, uh, Rick. That's it. <laughs> The, the links uh, links to their channels are in the description to this video. Timothy Kynard, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, did I miss it? Uh, Art Resin is another good, let's see. Art Resin is another good product I found. There's actually an online published study which looked at yellowing over time. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's always a, a, a concern, Jeff, is the yellowing. We'll see what happens with this. Uh, the first one I did, uh, I tore that layout down before it was finished, so I, it never stuck around long enough to yellow, so I don't know how that would have. Uh, let's see. Randall's got a pair of undecorated Atlas U36Cs. I made a final decision on a paint scheme for them, but I come up with something. I'm sure you will, Randall. I'd like to see it when you do. Uh, let's see. Did I thought I saw a comment here? Uh, maybe not. Okay. Uh, th thanks. Uh, thanks, Ian. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the way it came out, and really happy with uh, with how easy it was to work with. And like I said, for the price, you can't beat it. Uh, let's see here. I think that's uh, CSX Power is. Oops, CSX Power is pretty rare here too. T4, the usual non-BSF power series is uh, Norfolk Southern. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I I know Jeff. I I had heard that. Uh, the, this was back in the early 80s when I did this, and that was about the only reasonable option there was. And like I said, I, I ended up tearing that layout down <laughs> before it was finished, so I don't know if it, uh, <laughs> if it would have yellowed. Uh, it only goes yellow when your rat or cat pees on it. And yes, Norman, I do get that, so I guess that means I qualify. Uh, it's what I saw. 
And Ray, I certainly appreciate it, and I know uh, know everybody else does too. Thank you. Thank you for making sure uh, we we recognize and welcome everybody new. That's uh, that's what this community is about. It's a very friendly place. Um. Oh, cool, Ray. Is that for your, for your lab? So that's uh, that's really about all I had uh, had planned for tonight. Um, for some reason, when I <laughs> when I plan these things in my head, they always take a whole lot longer than when I when I actually sit here. Uh, let's see. I have an RSD three. I want to paint to B and O numbers. Was there a real maybe kind of sort of number for one? Uh, Mike, uh, look at uh, railroadpicturesarchive.net. They have uh, pictures and and rosters of just about everything for all the major railroads and and lots of probably all railroads. Uh, I I think you're right, Bob. Uh, and, and yeah, and in most basements it wouldn't. This is my living room, but it's up against the wall, so I don't. I'm not expecting a whole lot of sun to hit it, but uh, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, almost an hour, but uh, I keep thinking I'm going to be on here for about an hour and a half, and you people are all going to be tired of me and, and leave. You might be tired of me, but you haven't left yet, anyhow. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I certainly appreciate that. Uh, so if, if anybody had any questions on this, uh, right, we do have a few more minutes. Uh, our, our archives has been down for several weeks. Oh, I didn't know that. That's, uh, that's a shame. I, I, uh, use the, refer to, to their site for, for a lot of things. Uh, very good, Mike. Very good, Mike. Although, uh, Drew Dube said just said the the site's been down, so uh, so check it out. If they hopefully they'll be back up. Oh, and David G D Z to G says he was on there today. Uh, let's see, Mr. Jimbo, what uh, brand of H O what? Uh, are we talking about Locos, uh, Rolling Stock? Uh, <laughs> Okay, and let's see. Drew Dew says our our, our our railroad archives is back up. Our our archives. Uh, <laughs> true. Actually, my problem is I don't have a, I don't have a, a basement. I really wish I did. Hey, Alex, uh, Derek, great to see you. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> uh, sure, Bob. Uh, it was it's really simple. I. Uh, Kind of slathered it on there a little bit, not too thick, uh, uh, but spread out an area that would probably be about, oh, maybe two inches by three inches or something, somewhere along that side. Not not too far, not not too big, I mean. And just used uh, used a round tip brush in sort of a, a stabbing motion uh, in the direction that the... Uh, uh, <laughs> In the direction that the water was flowing, sort of, uh, sort of in a in a, in a scallop pattern, just uh, keeping the water flowing that way, and uh, the gel, like I said, it rounds over a little bit, gives you a really nice, um, really nice round over for the for the ripples, and I think it looks really good. Thank you, Rick, and the, there you go. The key is not to let Ray or Heath join in. <sighs> Oh, Ray's still here. That's good. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it, it, it was actually, uh, Bob, it was actually a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, it, it really, uh, it went it went pretty quick. That, that river's, uh, oh, probably about 38 inches long when you take into account all the, on the curves. And it took, 
oh, maybe 45 minutes or so, and I was just taking my, my time with it. Uh, well, yeah, colorblindness would, would uh, make that a little bit tougher, but uh, like I said, I put no... Uh, no tint into into this um, resin at all, and the bottom is just uh, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Roy, I agree with that. Uh, the The bottom, uh, all I did was uh, I put down my sculptor mold and then uh, a layer of dirt which I dug up from the backyard, and then just airbrushed it uh, a very dark very very dark black blackish blue uh, in the center where where the deepest water would be and just kind of feathered it out to the sides from there and uh, and poured the the clear resin on top of it I was I was really surprised at how much depth that that came out of it and how much color you actually get through that resin just picked up off the uh, the the riverbed <laughs> I, I actually do have a, a what was it, an extremely frustrating uh, the the uh, uh, Bob uh, the yeah all resin creeps up a little bit. Uh, good night, John. Thanks for stopping here. I appreciate it. Uh, and Jeff, yeah, blue green, especially when you're talking about water, blue green color blindness would be would be a problem. Uh, and Norman, good night. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, back to you, Bob. Uh, yeah, all resin creeps up some. Uh, you could no doubt uh, see at the edge of the river why I haven't trimmed down the, the meniscus yet that it, it, it climbs up a little bit. Uh, most of it, uh, what, what I did, um, yeah, that's true, Jeff. You just need, do need a, a tiny drop of, of paint in there. Uh, what I did along the along the edges of the river is I took some uh, some Mod Podge and uh, and used a, a fair amount. It was probably about oh maybe an ounce worth of, of Mod Podge, and I put in just one or two drops of white paint. It's very very uh, translucent. It's not uh, it's not a, a an opaque white at all. And I just lightly dabbed uh, along the edges of the river, giving it uh, giving it a waterline. Uh, if you if you noticed uh, in paintings, I learned this when I, I was watching Bob Ross paint, and he always took a little bit of white paint and cut uh, cut along the river, just along river or or whatever lakes, whatever water he was doing. Uh, uh, just to cut in, cut in a water line. It helps to separate the water from the, from the the, the river bank or whatever it is. And I used uh, that concept, like I said, with a very translucent. Just there's just enough white in there to just hint at a little bit of, oh, bubbling of the the water as it you know bounces along the the very bank of the river, and. Um, that seemed to, to hide most of it. Uh, the 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 resin that creeped up on that that um, a tree branch that's in the river and the few rocks I really wasn't worried about because um, the water would have been splashing up there anyhow. So I just when I put in my ripples, I put in a little bit bigger ripples there. Uh, to, to hide that and even in person it, it looks pretty good uh, there, there's really nothing that I'm going to actually have to hide uh, from it so I'm, I was real happy with it. it it seems to me that it didn't climb up as much as uh, the Envirotex did uh, when I did that but that could just be my memory that was, uh, that was quite a few years ago uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah, I, to eliminate the bubbles, I just used my heat gun, and uh, that worked out real well with this with this resin. Anyhow, when I did it with the Envirotex, though, I did use a small butane torch. Uh, I do have uh, one 
very frustrating. Uh, <laughs> yeah, after a while, the White Hills do start to get to you, except uh, mine are going to be all white. Uh, and Randall, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I taught myself to paint watching Bob, and and I use some of the some of his concepts all the time. Um, this the river that that I just showed you is actually the the. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the river that I showed you is actually the second river that I poured on this layout. I uh, I wanted a little bit of blue tint to it. <laughs> I'd say, Rick, happy little trees and happy little accidents. So when I when I ordered the um, the resin, I ran up to Michael's and I picked up some transparent resin dye. Came in a set of four uh, shades of of blue and and like a like a cyan, a dark cyan color. Yeah, and it, you know, suitable for for water. So I put in, uh, I ended up putting in like four drops of the, the the dark blue transparent dye. And I mixed it up and it was perfectly transparent. It was nice and dark. It was, it was the shade I wanted. So I poured it on the river. And with, at least with this resin, uh, if you're pouring a second coat, they suggest you do it. You wait about an hour and then pour the second coat. So I came down about an hour later, and it still looked pretty much the same as it did, you know, when I poured it. So I mixed up the second batch, put the same amount of, uh, of dye into it, poured that, put something on top of it so that uh, nothing, uh, no dust or anything would, would fall into it. And I was planning on not even looking at it until the next day. Well, I went down to lock up, you know, shut the lights off and everything to go to bed. And I, I couldn't walk away without, you know, lifting up that cover and, and take, checking it out. And this had been, at this point, probably about three or four hours since I poured the second coat. And I took the, the cover off of it. And that nice, dark, transparent blue had turned into a very bright, very opaque, very electric blue. I have absolutely no idea how, how this happened. Um, it, it, it changed um, uh, color. It changed color. Oh, it went from a color that is about the color of my shirt to a blue about the color of the river on my shirt. Uh, needless to say, I was really sick at that. So I, I thought, you know, I'm just going to go to bed and worry about it in the morning. And I laid there for about 45 minutes and I couldn't go to sleep. So I came down and grabbed the chisel and chiseled all of that out and put the, uh, the sculpt the mold and down and fixed the riverbed and my river banks again. And it came out fine. I'm happy with it now. But I was really sick with it at that point. So I, like I said, I have no idea how that happened. I don't know whether the maybe the dye was old. I don't know. Uh, but I'm real happy with the way it came out now. So, uh, so I, in the end, it, it, what what comes out in the end, I'm not complaining about. So anyhow, folks. Uh, I think I think I missed something here, but yeah, you probably don't want a Red River. Uh, Artie, right, I couldn't answer that. It's been so long since I've been on a passenger train. I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Okay, so folks, that's uh, like I said, that's about all I had for tonight. I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, I enjoyed uh, showing off how far I've gotten with uh, with the layout so far. 
Uh, I had really been hoping to to uh, be much further along by this by this point than I am. Uh, I will have trains running by Christmas, but that's probably about as far as it's going to get. Uh, there, I won't have very much of the the scenes finished uh, by then. But uh, I get the the trains running, or that guy's fired. So I will have. Uh, uh, I will have uh, trains running very shortly, hopefully. Uh, did the all power packs don't output the same voltage? Yes, I, uh, actually, I did know that, right? Um, I'm assuming you didn't. So, anyhow, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I had I had a good time. I hope everybody else did, and I hope you all have a have a great week ahead. Don't forget next week will be uh, Heath's Sidetrack Sunday and, uh, next Sunday at 8 o'clock. And uh, I hope to see you all there. And Mr. Pictovid, thank you. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, I've, I've made decent progress. I guess I'm just never happy with the progress that I make. So I, I uh, my, my eyes are bigger than my stomach, I guess. I always uh, figure I'm going to get further than I did. Uh T4, thank you. I appreciate you being here. So glad you uh, you found us. And Ozark Midland and Southern, thank you. Uh, getting, yes, getting the trains running is big. I can't wait. This is actually, uh, I'm working on two layouts, and I don't have trains running on either of them. So it, it's about time. Well, thank you, Bob. I certainly appreciate, appreciate you being here. Uh, I I know this is probably uh, dinner time for you, so I, I hope uh, hope your belly's not growling too bad. All right. Anyhow, everybody, uh, I'll see you uh, next week on. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it kind of goes with the territory, Rusty. It seems like uh, seems like that's pretty typical of model railroaders. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'll see you. Uh, don't forget tomorrow night at eight o'clock is uh, Tom. Tom's trains and things. I think he should probably be on uh, on this week. And uh, Heath is usually on about 9.30 or 10 o'clock on Monday nights. I'm not sure if he's going to, but keep an eye out for that. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you all in the stream someplace. So everybody, have a great week. And thanks so much for being here. <laughs>